Here we are, we're at Horseshoe Falls. This is the River Dee and feeds the Langoslin Canal for 46 miles all the way to Hurlston Reservoir at the junction. Morning viewers and here we are leaving lovely Langoflin after a wonderful festive week heading through the Narrows which is easy when there's two of you because one goes ahead and checks there's nothing coming the other way but uh, a little bit difficult for solo boaters I can imagine. Bit of a tight bend coming up. It's Friday the 29th of December and after a fab week in Hlangothlan we're on our way back to get across the aqueduct, Ponta Cathilti aqueduct. We've had a real chill out week and um, very unlike us we've made use of unlimited water and unlimited electricity. We have. And uh, kicked back a little bit but um, makes you lazy so quickly doesn't it? We've been plugged into shoreline so it's been fabulous having hot water at the flick of a switch yeah. and uh, longest showers we've had for in three years <laughs> isn't it? It's been fantastic. And we've just had a really restful Christmas. We've had a, a couple of uh, drinks out with other boaters and some friends but mainly we've just sat reading so much yeah. haven't we? And, a and just of walks. rested up, a couple of walks and yeah really recharged our batteries in all senses. It's going to take a while <laughs> to get back into the swing of video making etc isn't uh, it? <laughs> But um, we're going across the aqueduct now because they're draining it uh, for maintenance. Um, that's on Monday, isn't it? So it's Friday now. And um, this weekend we're being picked up by friends because we're house-sitting their dogs for yes. a few days over yeah. New Year. So that's exciting, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. All that space around us, hot water, and as much electricity as we can Again. eat. Again. Massive television screen. Are we ever going to get back into boat life proper? Yeah, we are. Come like, middle of next week, we'll be back 
looking forward to actually getting back to our off-gridish life again now. It's been nice for a week. But it has. Yeah. We've been moored under tall trees yeah. for a week and the yeah. wind's been blowing a gale. Yeah. We've had a uh, storm, whatever, Gilbert was it or something like that, oh, come across here. Yeah. It so, was yeah. really, uh, it really took us by surprise and there is a basin in Klangoflan that you can moor in but it was quite busy with other boats and it would have meant we were looking at boats either side of our windows and so we just really chose, we wanted to be quiet, we really yeah. preferred to be canal side but we did have these trees above us. But all was well and um, we had a lovely surprise because one of the other boaters along there dropped a Christmas card into us. We didn't know her, she doesn't know us and it had a £20 uh, gift voucher for the local greengrocer and she'd done it for all the boaters that were yeah. moored along there. It was really, really lovely, wasn't it? It was. So we're stocked full of lovely fruit and veg now. We are. That was a <laughs> lovely gesture. Anyway, right, got to get prepared. I'm hoping that we can get the drone up as we're going across the aqueduct. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how windy it's going to be, but we'll see. Yeah. And uh, let's get prepared then. The Ponte Casilti Aqueduct, or the Stream in the Sky, is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and took 10 years to build and completed in 1805. At 12 foot wide and 336 yards long, it's the longest and highest canal aqueduct in the world. Fuel boats like this from the Chamberlain Carrying Company are a lifeline to boaters, especially in the winter months, selling diesel, coal and oil. Oh, it's a cold, damp, rotten, grey, benign day benign but the, the little bulbs are beginning to perk up so it's not all miserable <laughs> we've just did, been discussing how do bulbs under the ground know when to start shooting but anyway that's a, a philosophical <laughs> argument for another day we are going shopping it's a, yes. a three mile walk to the tesco superstore and um we're having to take the long way around because the aqueduct as you can see behind it is closed for maintenance. So we get a lot of a lot of people asking us, why don't you get a Tesco's <laughs> delivery? Why don't you get a supermarket to deliver? Well, we never ever have. I've never had a supermarket deliver to me in my whole life. Or yours. You haven't either, have you? Have you had a supermarket? Uh, once or twice when I had young children and no car, but... But we actually enjoy the misery of it. <laughs> It's not, it's not that. You, we're talking about bulbs coming up and we've seen snowdrops already, we've seen all the daffodils coming up, we've seen sights like this looking at the aqueduct from a different point of view. We wouldn't have seen all of that if we weren't walking. No. We're getting exercise yep. and we get to personally pick what we want and try and uh, keep the plastic levels down and all that yep. sort of stuff. Um, so we just, it's part of our life, it will take us two or three hours to shop, but we're out exercising in the daylight, vitamin D and all that stuff, uh, you know. Yeah. It is, uh, <laughs> it is it's great seeing things from a different point of view and, and discovering, like we're going to go and see this town, 
uh, the other side of the, the valley that we've never been to, so it'd be interesting to see what's there, so who knows. I don't think it's that exciting of it, but it's just being out, it's just being part of what's around you. Um, and occasionally we found really, really lovely stuff on, on these walks that we didn't yeah. know, really unexpected stuff. So unless we know we can get a supermarket delivery, we know that is easy, but our life isn't necessarily about being easy, is it? Simple, it's, but not necessarily yeah, easy. Yeah. And also we're, we're carrying it back on backpacks, both of us. So we can't buy tons of rubbish. <laughs> I think if we were clicking away at a supermarket this we'd buy all sorts of stuff that we didn't need, wouldn't we? Yeah. But um, no, it's, it's all good. This is how we like it. Anyway, it's cold. I can't feel my fingers, so let's oh, go. Come on then. <laughs> well, this is Keffin Moor High Street, and there's not much going on. Most of the shops are closed down, just nail bars and hairdressers. Sad sight, friend. It's a really sad sight. There's an old dairy shop over there, it's now turned into florists, but they're closed. It's Saturday, and everything is closed except for the nail bars. Well, I can't tell you what a privilege it feels like to be here. So this is ancient woodland, 400 years old. I haven't yet seen any really, really big trees, but it's just got a feeling of being very, very natural. It's just been left to its own devices. And these bits of woodland are really, really rare now here. Either everything has been developed and harvested for the wood, or it's new woodland that's been built to replace or planted to replace old woodland. But I'm loving it. Um, and there was a signpost at the entrance to say there are some really rare plants here. This is January and it's cold, there's not much growing. There's signs of new growth, there's buds coming up, new shoots. But wow, I'd love to come back here in a month or so and try and find out the stuff that's growing. Something called Herb Paris that I've not even heard of. So I need to do some research and maybe come back. I don't know if we're around in a couple of weeks time, I'd love to come back again. Um, but I'm just, just loving it, just immersing myself in this old ancient woodland. And the dogs, of course, are in their element. I do a bit of baton twirling. Oh, here we are. We're in the village of Fron Casilti, otherwise known as Fron to the locals. And it's only just around the corner from the Ponte Casilti Aqueduct. And it's full of history, this place. It's such a lovely place to be, isn't it, as well? We only meant to stay for a couple of days, do a bit of filming and then move on. But we've felt so at home here, despite the shop being a long, long walk. We've <laughs> felt so comfortable and wanted to learn more about it that we've stayed for nearly a week now, haven't we? If you were here 150 years ago or so, the place would be filled with smoke. They used to quarry uh, limestone from up the hill, bring it down to the canal side, 
burn it in lime kills at a thousand degrees centigrade put it on a little tramway and carriages and take it to a train further around the boats used to be loaded up also with uh, stone and lime I suppose. I think there were brickworks here as well mm. as it's all sorts but obviously the canal made that happen and before I got the canal there was something like 18 houses here and then the canal arrived and suddenly there were 800 people living here working on the quarries and on the canals and the whole town built up around it. But this house here has uh, a little bit of history to it, Fran. Yeah, so the White House behind Rich was owned by a lady called Dorothy Hartley, and she inherited it from her family who um, worked at the, uh, the quarries. But she moved here in 1933, and she was a really famous author, and she wrote a famous cookery book called, I believe, uh, The Food of England. And she just went into the history, going right back almost to medieval times of how people ate and grow and produce their food. Um, and we found out about her just by off chance from a canal book, didn't we? Yeah, we were we? reading the Pearson's Guide to the can local canals here and uh, he mentioned her and we'd never heard of her before. So I did a bit of rummaging around on the internet and there's not a lot about her to be honest there. Um, but there is a, a documentary that the BBC did about 10 years ago with Lucy Worsley. So I'll put a link below uh, to that video. It's fascinating. It's only an hour long documentary, but it really is uh, interesting, isn't it? And she the had character. quite a connection to the canal because some of the recipes in the book she got from boaters and she'd learned how they cook all their three course meal in one pot on the fire. So on the back of this, I've had to order the book, <laughs> which is being delivered tomorrow. Um, so I'm very excited. It's one of the great things that happens to us when we travel around. You learn about local history and people that have lived in places and you would never have known about it otherwise. No. So anyway, really historic, really lovely. So apart from that, we're going to go and look at the quarries now, which, are, which is now a nature reserve. There's a 400 year old woodland that you had to look around the other day, didn't you? Did Ancient a bit of recording. woodland, yeah. Um, and uh, it's just an interesting place, so let's go and have a look. Yeah. Steep one, Fran. It is. <laughs> Don't make me talk. Oh, oh God. <clears throat> this will burn that Christmas cake off. <sighs> Look at that. That's amazing. So this is the quarry where the limestone was cut out. <laughs> Bloody <laughs> steep coming up that hill, I can't speak. Yeah, and that's just for us walking. So the quarry workers would have had to walk up from the village in the morning and then had, I don't know. 12 hours what, digging what, stone out, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, lovely walk. It's a pretty dense forest here, but there's Hardly any bird sound. We it's just really bizarre. Heard a crow a minute ago. It's just eerie. It's just so quiet. Beautiful though, isn't it? Strange place. There's a gate up there. Let's walk up there and see what the view's like. Yeah. Well, that was well worth the push to get to the top here. The view is absolutely stunning. And down in the D Valley just there is the aqueduct. And then running along that way goes all the way to um, Klangothlan, where we were at Christmas. Stunning. It's just breathtaking, isn't it? 